do you like Christian girls? I, I thought you didn't like oh, Christian this is girls. A question. Is it, I don't. I don't. I like you, Christian girls. You want a I Catholic? Think, no. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah no, Southern New York Post article. On oh, you guys. saw that? Yeah. What, what a great what, post. <laughs> what a great. It's I like, had the call her daddy seat. girl gone by. I did, I oh, is that what they it, called us the Christian I, call her daddy, which is like. Uh, yeah, yeah. And they, Genius. It is. Yeah, really right. Wait, 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 wait. Hey. Call her daddy. It's so it's the number one podcast ever, and it's it was these two girls originally, and it was originally like, how would you describe it? It was like a very provocative podcast. Oh, it's it now super vulgar, like crazy, like, crazy, the, crazy like stuff. really bad. But now it's rebranded, and it's they do guests, and it's not quite the way that it used to be. But it's the number one podcast, and they called us the Christian Call Her Daddy. Mm -hmm. She and they got, really dug up some up. stuff they of dug us. Up every, they got us in like the ratchet music like, videos that we were in. <laughs> no, they, wait, 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 we should start. <laughs> we should wait, start. Wait, 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 <laughs> a lot of good content here. I don't want to disrupt. I want to be rolling already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're good. No, no. So okay, wait. So but call her daddy. She got like a sixty million dollar payout from yeah. Spotify, and she had this like crazy breakup, which hopefully you guys never had. Absolutely not. Yeah. Because I already had one. Oh, jeez. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. no. <laughs> but let, let's go there. Let's go let's there. Go let's go there. break up. It's, uh, I can't. You. It's, uh, you just went through a breakup. I'm very sorry. I'm so no, sorry. no, I'm just saying I've had one. Okay. okay. Oh, no, okay. the friendship breakup. No, that will never be us. I would die without you, truly. Yeah. My <laughs> lifeline. Life. I can't also, the last, you have a way of asking questions that go to places no one expects. Yeah. <laughs> well, you said something on the last podcast where you where he thought your husband had died I know. do you understand the comments I got people were dying <laughs> laughing like he thought I said my husband's dead yeah, I, so I, I didn't good. know how to I thought, you didn't wow, know. Like really casually <laughs> she let you really her, are. it's like my husband's dead and I had coffee this morning <laughs> it's so <laughs> apathetic yeah what, what was the question it was like do we if if my if if are we married in heaven? Was that the yeah. I, I said if you got if your husband died and you got remarried, who do you go with in heaven? Yeah. His face, he you was did. so thrown off. He didn't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> so many I moments like that. It was so funny. That, that is the the nice thing about this podcast. I think because Sunday is obviously you're speaking and it's a, a a very clear message. But the podcast here is especially with guests is that it's a little disarming. Like people just we don't. There's no introduction. There's no outro. We just kind mm -hmm. of start talking. Yeah. And then people just start saying things. I kind of you know? love that. I so love that. It's great. I I you love how, little. yeah, your guys is really casual. We put a lot of pressure on ourselves <laughs> <Yeah>. to be <laughs> pastors. <laughs> and sometimes, I don't even know the Bible. You're, you, yeah. you, you, you have more pressure on yourselves to be pastors than I would ever feel and in my ever, life. Yeah. And when we started the podcast, to me, like when I speak on Sunday, I try to speak from things that I have conviction about yeah. mm -hmm. and that come from the scriptures. But I don't feel the same thing on the podcast. See, on the podcast, I'm allowed to have opinions. <laughs> I'm allowed to be very wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I'm allowed to change my mind. <laughs> I love it. And so I like this because it it's it's more a place where I can play. I right. love that. Uh, you know, on Sunday I try to be imaginative, but it, it's not the same. I don't I don't give myself permission mm -hmm. yeah. to bring in just like my own opinions or feelings or in that way. Yeah. And here I'm like no, we're just we're just talking. I love, I love it. it. We need a little laughter. Yeah, we we recently started to be a little bit more loose and have like yeah. our personality show and because we have like the most sarcastic personalities and we joke so much and like yeah. our friendship is built on roasting each other and mm -hmm. like laughing all day. <laughs> Truly. And so we brought that out a little bit on the podcast and people are enjoying like actually seeing us be normal and be human. How does that feel? Because I feel like, okay, so I've obviously, I've known you for two years. I yeah. think you're a new friend, I'm but new. you're new. Yeah, you're new. <laughs> but uh, what, what like, what caused the Girls Gone Bible thing? Like what made you decide to start doing the podcast? Like where did it come from? And get into that relationship yeah. a little bit. Were you guys friends before? Yeah, we were friends before. So you're not an industry plant? No. <laughs> Such a compliment. I, I, I know, thank you. That is the best well, compliment. You guys have had massive success so yeah. quickly. Yeah. God really just kicked us right in, yeah. especially me. Yeah. I had no idea about anything. <laughs> well, so this is basically what happened. So Ari and I met. So we have a really funny story about how we met. We were on a modeling job and... I had walked in, it was her birthday, it's November 9th, which is coming up, so our anniversary is actually coming up as well. So it's November 9th, I walk into this place and I see this girl, and she's crying and she's crying and she's crying, and she's in the makeup chair, and she kept having to get her makeup redone because she kept crying. What were you going through? Down bad. 
She was I, not feeling I, good. I, I was, was this I was, the breakup we're talking about? I was, yeah. That's what I was wondering too. <laughs> I was in a very <laughs> dark place. Full circle back to the breakup. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there and I'm I'm just weeping and I'm like, how am I going to get through this? And all of a sudden I look to my left and I feel someone grab my hand and it's her. And I had to double look because she, she didn't even say her name. She was just like, I don't know who you are, but we're going to get through this together. Wow. And I just remember looking at her because at the time I was super isolated and I was so alone and I had been praying for for a friend, a godly friend, because that I, at the time I had found God, but all of my friends weren't Christian or believers. And so I just kept praying, please bring me someone like me because I wasn't connecting to anybody in the churches. And so then here's this little angel and she grabs my hand and she's like, we'll get through it together. And from that moment we were best friends yeah it, I like I'm not that I'm pretty introverted I love people and I'll talk to people but I don't necessarily just go up to random people so I don't know what it was that in that moment I just felt a pull to her and I was like I gotta go talk to this girl and in that moment we literally became inseparable and basically we spent the next I was also going through a breakup actually at the same time <laughs> and we were both we like made a pact that we were yeah. swearing off men like we we're literally like we're gonna <laughs> we're we're How gonna get go it went well yeah. it went really well so this yeah. is what we did we started having we basically had sleepovers every night for two weeks watched the chosen every night and this is when i took <laughs> can you please let me tell this sweet story? No, 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 please, please, please. Can we just be sweet for yes, a minute? Yes, then we'll yes, get into yes, the rock yes. stuff. Okay, All right, okay. it's real. It's that wholesome. That's so, amazing. and then I literally told Ari, I was like, listen, I know you're not feeling good, but I have the answer. We're going to read the Bible. And then so we started reading the Bible together. And her life changed and my life changed. And it was just really incredible. And then we started just with all the people around us because we don't have like we didn't grow up in the church we didn't grow up uh, with all the language and all that that everybody uses so we basically were just going around to the people around us like the girls around us who kind of believed in Jesus kind of believed in God but not really who were involved in a lot of stuff like they didn't want to be involved in and a lot of people kept coming up to us for help like how do I pray what do I do and so we basically just took what we were doing in our personal life and one day we were like, let's just record this somehow. Let's just talk about God. Let's talk about the Bible and and prayer and what it does for you. And let's put it somewhere. N n the word podcast never even was a thought in our head. Like we've never wanted to be podcasters. I still don't want to be a pod. I don't even consider myself a podcaster. Like I want to talk about Jesus, yeah. you know? And so we did that. We filmed our first episode. It was ridiculous no it was so like just all Did over you guys the place. go into a studio yeah and then you just, you're just like we're gonna go for it we went well, for it we, what yeah. was the first topic it was our testimonies i look at her i go you better find another co-host i am not doing this yeah. i i just started reading the bible two weeks ago <laughs> I, she's she's spitting scripture james but i'm like what is happening <laughs> i was like i can't do this I, and but really so we we filmed that first episode and it was just a mess and we we're like this will never see the light of day like we're not <laughs> no one can watch this and so i had a couple of months before I started posting on TikTok talking about Jesus and it was like the most embarrassing thing I'd ever done. I was mm. like, why would I do this? But I knew that God was calling me to. He was pressing in on me so much. And I kept being like, absolutely not. Like people are going to look at me and be like, you like, no, you're not yeah. going to go talk about God. But I was just mm. I I don't know. I just started doing it and it got people's attention. And then I used clips from the first episode I cut them up, I made them all, and then I put them on TikTok and that's when they started like going off. And people were just basically saying, where can we watch this? What is this called? Where is this podcast? And then so well, I Well, one of your video got 19 million views and we've looked at each other and we were like, what is happening? So that happened before you guys did your first episode? So that- so or, or that, was that from that first episode? Yeah, that's from that first episode. Oh, wow. okay. Yeah. And so Crazy. basically- yeah, I went to Ari and I was like, "You let's buckle up, sister, because you're my co-host and we're about to do this. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's start That's memorizing fun. scripture. That's no, amazing. yeah. Maybe I want to go backwards okay. yeah. for people who maybe are meeting for the first time. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about where you're from, maybe your your your, your background. Yeah. And, you go first. You no, go. go ahead. I'm originally from Boston. Um, I didn't grow up 
religious. I I was Catholic. Um, let's see. I would say that I grew up. I I grew up a little rough. Like I didn't grow up in the best neighborhood. I I, I struggled. I would say my whole life I grew up not really having an identity, always relying on myself when you have your real reliance is on God. And so I would say I spent most of my life feeling pretty empty and just lost and putting my identity into men. And then I moved to LA when I was just 18 and I got into the industry really fast. And then my identity was that and my looks and I just felt so purposeless. And I always had this nagging feeling that I was meant to help people, but I just didn't even know where to begin. She wanted to go to nursing school at some point. Like not, she didn't even want to be a nurse, but she just wanted to help people. I did. I tried to go to nursing school. That didn't work out. I actually applied at an elderly home and they wouldn't (laughs) hire me because I wasn't vaccinated. I was like, (laughs) I was. There we go. Now this this call just got banned on YouTube. Great, perfect. Keep going. It's okay. We can cut it up. But I was. I, I was I was modeling and doing sitcoms, but I just felt so empty and purposeless. I was like, what what am I doing? Like I I'm not adding any value into this world and I really want to be helping. But I now that I see what God was doing, I didn't even know who I myself. So how could I help anyone when I couldn't even help myself? So yeah, then he put me in a really dark place, completely isolated me. I was really, really, really broken. I mean, to the point where I didn't even think I was going to come out of it. I couldn't even get out of bed for months. And um, yeah. And so then by the grace of God, I went into a church one day and I just fell to my knees. And I remember just being like, God, I hate this so much. Like, I am so broken. Help me. What do I do? Who do you want me to be? I can't get out of this. My my thoughts were so overbearing that it took over my life. My anxiety was just, it was killing me. And in that moment, I had felt this comfort. It was like a supernatural comfort, like a parent was hugging me. And I had never felt that before, like a peace. And um, I just, I had this moment where I felt like everything was going to be okay. And I could just hear him saying, trust me, just trust me. And I need you to get to know me first before you can do anything else. Rest in that. And from there, I just became so obsessed with learning. I started watching sermons and I started going to church and then just praying, please bring the right people into my life. And then he brought me her. And she introduced me to the Bible and she kept praying on me. I remember the day that you, I mean, I was so broken. You put your hands on my head and you literally prayed on me. And I remember you could see like I was in chains, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it was a really, I could, you could literally just feel being around her that like there there was just so much. She she needed freedom. You know what I mean? She needed to be delivered from the heartbreak and and all the pain that she was suffering from yeah and so yeah and that that's my story i i it changed my life i would go through it all over again to to bring because god was really trying to bring me to my to my destiny and it's beautiful but yeah i i definitely grew up not having god not being told about god and things like that so Hmm. yeah how about you what's where'd you come from so I am Albanian and I- <laughs> You're Albanian? Albanian, yeah. I'm first generation. I was born in Germany. Wow. Yeah, my family um, my family fled from Albania. There was a war in 1996, right before I was born. They were in Germany. They had to come to America. Um, it was a whole process. They went through so much. My parents, that's why my parents are very tough on us because they grew up in communist Albania, so they don't have time for my <laughs> issues. They're like, I don't care <laughs> about It's a very different saying. reality, right? <laughs> Truly, yeah. yeah it yeah. makes you very tough being the <laughs> yeah. daughter of So immigrants. life is hard for you, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then I grew up in... All down the East Coast. We spent some time in the Bronx in New York. And then I grew up in Connecticut, went to high school in Florida. We've just been everywhere. And then I came to L.A. when I was 18. And yeah, just been on a roller coaster my whole life. <laughs> you were basically. an actor, though, right? Or you both were actors. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah I'm still an actress. OK, yeah. So, so do you guys do that still? You guys yeah. are still acting, you're still auditioning and doing that whole thing. Are you yeah. doing that as well? Yeah, yeah, I do. I just I'm at the point where I'm like, 
I put so much pressure on it before. I was like, if I don't get it, then what am I going to do? And now I'm just like, I really believe I'm living in my purpose now. So I'm like, if it if it happens, it happens. If not, whatever. Okay. And yeah. then you, you've obviously been on shows. You were yeah. on American Horror Story. Mm -hmm. So how did you, I remember when I first met you, mm -hmm. you had I think you had just I done. I had just done yeah. it, yeah. But how, so how did, like, how does how does that go? It's like one of the industry's darkest shows in, I know. in, in, in the world. And yeah. then, you know. Can I be honest? Yeah, so sure. uh, Aaron and no, I, be <laughs> so Aaron and I, I remember you were the first, cause I remember it was like one of our first conversations we were talking about something and I was so, I was like, I am uh, anti anything, anti Christ. Like I loved you. Like I was, I just go so hard for Jesus. And you yeah. were, all he said was, well, you were on American Horror Story. So how do you, uh, <laughs> That's how, how do you that deal with that? You. And it was the first time that I, because I don't watch scary movies. I don't yeah, yeah. watch these things because I know that it's not good for you. And so I kind of over the past year and everything I've done has like, like inclined, it has been towards horror and stuff like that. And it's my strength and it's something that I've been honestly dealing with with God and I've realized over time and it's been like a slow pruning process because it's the truth is like being a Christian is tr the hardest thing like a true follower of Jesus and doing everything in accordance with scripture and like really trying to live right yeah. it's so difficult and it's been a long <laughs> <Yes>. process but <laughs> like no I, I'm coming to terms with the fact that like there are some things that seem like a good thing and that seem like a blessing, but I don't believe that God will ever ask you to sin or like walk out of side of his will to provide for yourself, yeah. you know? And so, So yeah. you're saying he was actually throwing shade on the fact that you were on American Horror Show. I, I can think I tell one you of the so first things I ever said was like, you're cheesy. <laughs> no, you say no, no, you're no, too no, Christian. No, oh, come I on, I want, yeah, wait, I want to dive wait, into why? here. One, come of, the, on. one <laughs> of the first things Aaron ever said to me, he goes, you're weirdly religious. I go, I, <laughs> You're a pastor's son. What are you talking about? Well, th this, <laughs> where we get no idea. We're very I'm open to... about our, and th you know, like, like past. I've, yeah. So I've had to when say. you were vaping, was it because you struggled with anxiety? Yeah. 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 Because a lot of people I know, it really becomes an adult version of a pacifier. A hundred percent. Yeah. Right. I had really, really bad anxiety and that's truly why I smoked. And mm -hmm. I, 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 we met middle of COVID, like <laughs> in the first year, like it was, there was a lot going on in the world. There yeah. was COVID, there was BLM. I think we were just starting to go, like be able to be outside. And yeah. so I get it. I get it. Thank you. Did you, you have a vape in your hand? I did not. I did not have a vape <laughs> Don't in lie. Hand. I definitely didn't. I was like, do you have one in your jacket like, right now? No, I don't. I was like, can you please stop? And she was like, no, no, I need to do this. No, I did not say I need to do it. Can you relax? <laughs> I didn't say I need to do this. The I, girl's gone viral. I had been saved for like six months, okay? I wasn't like, I had just started reading John. I didn't know. <laughs> no, no, but there, there's no up. no shade, but like, but yeah. But wait, so sorry, go, 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 talk. I'm making this worse right now. <laughs> no, it's good. No, I think it's Who one. Cares? I just love how honest you guys are. <laughs> and there's nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah. No. Because it's, in fact, it's what makes your story real. Yeah. That you had, if you were perfect, you wouldn't have needed Jesus. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you didn't have struggles, you wouldn't have been looking for something you, you couldn't even understand. Right. And I love the fact that you guys got to know each other in, in the process of that journey. Yeah. I think that's pretty cool. Me too. But also, I think it's yeah. also why we'd be stayed friends. It was because I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm not perfect either. I'm just not ripping a vape. But there's a, plenty of other things that I do yeah. wrong in my life that I like have to struggle with and work on. No, the funniest and thing to me is when what? you say you're weirdly religious. We are <laughs> yes. Let me tell I, I remember exactly I was, where we were. I was like, you're so weird about the like Jesus and stuff. No, do you know like, what I mean? I, I, said, with you. I said something about yeah. him prophesy. I was like, something that I was like, don't prophesy that over my life. And he goes, what are you saying? What is and I was this? like, Wait, it's in the Bible. Like, am I wrong? Am I, I actually thought that about you two for a minute. <laughs> no, she did. I know. He goes, no. oh, she kept talking about the enemy. The enemy's coming out. Enemy, that's like, what it was. Who's the enemy. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you guys are also okay. really normal human beings as well. Yeah. And that's what I think makes you guys really special and why I do like the pod. Yeah. Because it's like these two genuinely crazy people who yeah. have lived real life. Like, no, I don't know you as much. <laughs> so one and a half, one and a half. But 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 that's what makes it really unique is that like you are the real deal. It's not this, it, I, and I say this uh, maybe with like a grain of salt, but it's not an industry plant thing where you're two girls who lived a very easy, privileged mm. life. Yeah, You both have had 
tumultuous situations where ups and downs good and bad a little bit of success instagram following whatever it may be you're mm -hmm. both beautiful girls in los angeles the world opens up when you are and there's heavy and light situations right there's really dark you both know we've talked about this but but the fact that you guys have like figured out your way through it and then created something that is so like how many friends of mine are like do you know girls gone bible and i'm like i love them and they're the real deal wow. and they're crazy <laughs> but for doing this because like you know i love that your youtube description talks about like uh being imperfect mm -hmm. co-host that that talk about someone who is perfect and it i think it perfectly describes the podcast we are the two most imperfect girls she always says most and i'm like hang on i think there's other people <laughs> that might be worse <laughs> <laughs> no, me. But, yourself but, I know. <laughs> but it's true and I honestly didn't even want to come to religion because I've seen that side of Christianity that is like so judgmental and weird and I'm just like I'm not getting involved with that yeah but I just know what Jesus has done for my life like literally has gone me through the pit and so you know I think so I always think about it like this because there are a lot of, I listen to a lot of faith-based podcasts and I looked up to a lot of women in the Christian space who are, have been obedient to God their whole lives, who have never stepped out and, and like straight away, who grew up and their parents were pastors and their parents, and they're such incredible women to look up to. That is not my story. Yeah. That is not most people's <clears throat> story. And I think that it can be so discouraging when you see someone who is so perfect because I know for me, when I see that, it's so overwhelming that I'm like, that's not attainable for me. I know. And so I just think it's so funny that God truly did use two people who are going through it in front of people, like learning. We are true. Like we tell them, like we're learning with you and we really are. That doesn't mean that we can have slack and do wrong and not do the right thing just because we're learning but I, you don't say it as an excuse it, you say it as the yeah. reality of the yeah. situation of like you're both going through a journey of learning the scriptures we yeah. truly are learning and, and learning it out loud and learning how to be christians like yeah. like not having one foot in one foot out how's I'm, that going it's going, it's going. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, i'm not gonna lie to you it's been really tough yeah it, it really has I, I, I I'm I still call her and I'm like, is this okay? <laughs> That's what we do. All. You know what? Recently we realized, and we have good community. We have mentors, but we need like community because at one point we kept asking each other questions and I was like, this is literally the blind leading the blind. Literally. We need someone we need like, mentors. you know what I mean? I love um, how pure your language is. Like one, you have to realize from as you know, much shade as Aaron's throwing on you, he never wants Christians on this podcast. <laughs> no, even wow. John Gordon. I was like, I was like, my man, please calm it down. I was, please. I was shocked when he said, "Hey, I want to have Charles Metcalf." It, yeah, you know, I love him and Charles. Charles were friends, right? Yeah, yeah. but uh, because Aaron really, you know, sees the space as a <laughs> way of expanding into the world of people who don't believe. Mm -hmm. So the fact that he really wanted to have you guys on is actually the greatest compliment he could give you. No. Well, th this, yeah, but I don't care. <laughs> but no, but two things. When you invited him on, it was hilarious. Because I, I haven't, we hadn't talked in a while. Yeah. And, and like, just randomly get, hey. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> oh, Lord. Like, please, like, what is this hey about? And then I just see typing. Like, you know, when it tells you it's typing. And I was like, there's going to be some drama that I don't want to deal with right now. And I don't know why I, I thought that. Drama. You're really not drama. You're a safe person. And then it was like, do you think your dad will do a podcast? And I just heard, a, I was driving and started laughing and then picked up the phone and was like, let me call him right now. I couldn't believe you said yes. And it would be very unlikely for me to say yes. Wow. Like I don't say yes to Christian podcasts yeah, and or even hardly to Christian events. And mm -hmm. you guys know me enough to know that that's not really the world I feel comfortable in, yeah. even though I love Jesus. Yeah. And, but Aaron calls me and he says, <laughs> There's this podcast He's on the speakerphone called, with my mom called in the Girls Gone Bible, <laughs> and they wanted the podcast, and I'm sitting there going, who kidnapped my son? <laughs> and and uh, he was like, wait, like, do you know these people? And I'm like, yes, I know these people. And no, I know he's these like, people. no, he's like, dad, you need to do this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, you want me to do this podcast? And yeah. I never heard of it, yeah. all right? Because, you know, I'm, it would be probably odd if I was following a podcast of Girls Gone Bible, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. And Maybe not, no. No, maybe not. N not now, now yeah, that yeah, I know yeah. you, but, you know. And so I did it because he was telling me, you need to do this. And, uh, and I'm so glad I did. Love I'm you guys so, so much. I think you're, you guys are amazing. But you also know that 
I put a lot of work in making sure, like if I'm going to talk about the devil or if I'm going to talk about something in the world of prophecy, I'm going to use language that is really accessible to a lot of yeah. people. Yeah. And so it's not even that I don't agree, it's just the approach mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. I'm always really cautious of. Yeah. But when I was new in my faith, my language is just like yours. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, see, people don't realize that this is me after 40 years. Yeah. You, you know, mm -hmm. and learning how to communicate to people that I'm really trying to help. But when, and then Kim, my wife, her language is still like yours. I love it <laughs> she so refuses much. to change. She's like, she just is who she is. Yeah. You, you know, yeah. and so sometimes I think it's more about um, your own just texture and your gifts and the way God's designed you and everything like that. Yeah. But I also think it's because it's who you're supposed to be right now. Mm -hmm. It's because if you tried to be different, it wouldn't be real to you. Yeah. And, you know, I don't like it when people use language just because it's, it, it's what they do to fit in. Yeah, you're doing it opposite. You're just you're just being you. Mm -hmm. And if people accept you, they accept you. If they reject you, they reject you. And I really re admire that and respect that. Thank I think it's really really so powerful. Much. And at the same time, I think that people can't figure you out. It was only after I did the podcast with you that I went, oh, girls gone Bible, girls gone bad. Yeah. It, it, was that a no it, no girls gone wild? Go, oh, girls, girls gone, gone wild. wild. Yeah. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can know that I'm not a fan. Yeah, okay, like, I like, could see you with right. the tapes like hidden. Did you have those? Wait, what? What, what tapes? <laughs> the Girls Gone Wild tapes? No. Yeah, no. Right. I was too I, young I for that. I know you did. I was too young. No, no. That would, that would have been the generation <laughs> so before me. Because I oh, think okay. that was like early 90s. Okay, okay. But it's a play on like an old like. But I didn't, yeah. I didn't, it didn't like, click until website. later. <laughs> which I'm glad it didn't click for me. But then I realized. My mom is... laughed immediately, by the way. <laughs> no, she, really she heard it and went, ha. Yeah. And I was like, you should do it. Yeah. But, but this is the power of it is that yeah. um, a lot of people don't want to believe that two young model actresses who could be successful in many different spaces actually mm -hmm. need Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think you letting people watch you grow is an incredibly courageous thing. Mm. Because you're going to look back and, you know, in five years you're going to go, Oh wow, I believe that. Or oh wow, you know. Yeah. I thought the only safety I have is that there was no internet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. And uh, I mean, <laughs> if people heard the things I said and how I said them and things I did, um, and even things I believed that I don't even believe anymore because right. I've changed my mind. Mm -hmm. But I believed them 100. Yeah. percent I was all in. You know. Yeah. And I think that's a part of the fun of it is that. You're just basically going, hey, we're going to grow in front of you. Mm -hmm. we're, we're trying to figure this out. We're, we've just met Jesus for the first time, you know, and, um, and we're trying to figure out what it means to be sincere in our faith. And yeah. we're trying to figure out how to help you understand what we're understanding. I think it's incredible. I, I really do. I think it's really special. So, you're, so we would talk about this before when we were just friends. And, and what, you know, one of the big reasons I love having you guys on this is because for, for the two years we were friends, you would always be like, hey, I just had the craziest night. I was on a job and I just was praying for all these girls. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know them. And you'd be in like the weirdest spaces or like yeah. you were in the trenches for a minute, yeah. you know, and yeah. you were always sharing your faith in those things. And I, I thought it was just so... You were like a, like a diamond in the rough, which I thought was so amazing. And that's what I, I had told him was like, look, these people are like the real deal. They've lived a similar story to me where, you know, they've, they, and now they have a great faith and a great relationship. But one of the things I want to ask you guys about is how do you manage the hate? And on the, whether it's YouTube or Instagram, do you get hate? Do you guys, I saw the New York Post article, not to start up the drama, but like, how do you manage yeah. that? Well, okay, first let me say that as time has gone on, we've been doing this since May. So since then, we some things that we got were deserved and there were things that we needed to change. We, there were things we needed to clean up and adjust a little bit. And if we want to go on and like represent Jesus, we have to go and do it well. What were those things? Oh, yeah. I, mean, I just don't even know. Yeah, I'm not trying to yeah, No, no, yeah. no. I mean, like in terms of modesty and in dressing and in behavior and in like uh, the first couple of episodes, like we didn't know exactly wow we did not know that we were going to be it was going to be as faith-based like we knew it was going to be about jesus but like the first episode i think i spelled out a swear word like instead of saying it i spelled it out you know there are things like that that were just unacceptable and we agreed with them and there are like things that we adjusted and changed um 
But then it was really loud at first. Like the hate, there was so much love. Our Instagram, it was our Instagram. It, it was, was our on photos. In, so you know what it, it was? was? Your personal Instagrams? Oh More yeah. Than it was the, okay, okay. Both. So this is what I loved about it though, is that anyone who took the time to watch a full episode, we get truly zero hate. Yeah. Like barely ever even one comment of hate mm -hmm. because when someone takes the time to actually get to know us yeah. and what we're saying, and it's not just a one second little clip where you didn't even listen to what I said, you just looked at how much makeup I was wearing. Like that's, those are the people that I care about. Now on the Instagram is the, that's where we would get most of the hate. People would be like, who are these girls? They don't know Jesus, false prophets, blah, 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 whatever. Oh, we got a lot of those. And Jezebels. So, Jezebel. And I'm like, please, for the love of God. <laughs> they call those Jezebels more. I go, what is it? Jezebel? Oh, yeah. She, yes, yes. <laughs> She's like, it's a sexual <laughs> demon. I'm like, ah. It's, oh, 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 it's a woman in the Bible who's a hoe. It's okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's okay. She's, yeah, You're it's, not she's, that. You're not that. No, absolutely not. No. But I, uh, Was that unique for you? Yeah, I mean, I hadn't, I wasn't in social media. Like, I didn't get people. Plus, also, when you open yourself up in the Christian space, you're opening yourself up to so much criticism that is like, at least when you're just in the world, like you're, you're, that's the only, when you're doing Christian stuff, like you've got both sides and nobody's going to be happy yeah. with what you're doing. I hope you figured out that all the people who say things like you have too much makeup on, or yeah. you're a Jezebel, that those are really unhealthy people <laughs> yeah. who believe in God, but God is not telling them to say that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're not representing Jesus. Yeah. And people who represent Jesus aren't going to berate you publicly. Mm -hmm. Yeah the people who represent Jesus, even when they disagree with you, yeah. are gonna be gracious and kind. It's the truth. Yeah. I, yeah, I, during that time, I remember when I, it was the first couple of weeks, it was really hard on me personally. Ari was always pretty strong about it. She's, she didn't. I've been dealing with it my whole life. I'm like, whatever, these Christians. Yeah, I, I was like. <laughs> nothing new, nothing new. I, I was That's a little amazing. bit, I was really sensitive to it because I got really in my head and because I was already a little bit insecure about doing a podcast because I, they kept commenting like you will know them by their fruit. And the truth was like, I did have fruit that wasn't necessarily great and I, I have some good fruit like I'm proud of a lot of my fruit but you know some of the fruit wasn't and so I was for a few days I was so messed up about it I couldn't open my bible like I was every I, I truly felt like a fraud and they kept saying like you don't know Jesus and I was like it was so weird I was like maybe I don't know G like mm. I was so messed up thinking like I don't know the guy who like is my whole life it was so weird how it happened but very quickly I was like no, you don't know Jesus. I know Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not playing these games with you. So it was, yeah. And then, but, and then, so we got used to it. And they honestly also let up. Like we truly gained some street cred with the Christians. We 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 did. And they, you know, I they we don't get. It's not nearly what it used to be. We deleted all 500 of our photos on Instagram, which That's is for the house. best. For the best. So the the stuff that you felt maybe, because there's obviously something that like I'm not saying anything at all, but. It, uh, for I think listeners out there who maybe are like on the fence or like don't maybe don't have a relationship with Jesus or maybe are not so conservative mm -hmm. you felt like those things resonated so you made some adjustments to yeah. your own personal lives yeah. Yeah. how was that process because obviously you, we live in an era where that's it would be the opposite it'd be post your body and do whatever you want because you're a woman and you can and you mm -hmm. should mm -hmm. because men have been doing whatever they want for generations yeah. and so how did you guys come to the conclusion that you know these are the changes we're gonna make we feel healthy about this not controlled because i think yeah. a lot of women would go and i yeah i'm gonna get rocked for saying no, for speaking from a no. women's perspective maybe i identify as a woman right now <laughs> but here's the thing is that like how did you guys come to the conclusion like okay you know what like this isn't what we're gonna be anymore yeah, I think. Was there a sit down conversation or is it just naturally happened? I think it naturally happened. Naturally for me, while I got deeper into my faith, I started just naturally adopting more traditional conservative values and nobody was telling me to change anything that was happening within me. I started to realize things and I started to kind of realize that oh, all these messages that we get from like society and the media that tell you this is empowering and this is good is probably the opposite. Mm -hmm. um, and I was realizing that all the things I was doing that I thought made me feel good actually made me feel empty. And um, for example, like, 
being immodest or posting myself in a provocative way or behaving in a certain type of way, like a way that I've probably acted my whole life all of a sudden and nobody told me to feel like this. I was like, I'm believing a lie thinking that this is good. What, like, what am I lacking within myself that I feel the need to, need to portray myself this way? Mm. Like what part of me wants to feel validated? Because I know when I think about myself, I don't, th I, my looks or myself, it, that's like on the back burner compared to all the things that I value about myself, like my brain and my heart and the things I say and the way I treat people. And that's what the people I love value in me. So why am I turning to something that's so superficial and surface level, like what I look like in my body and things like that. But then there was another part of us. It was like shedding a part of our identity because even we still have trouble with it now where we're like, wait, we can't post that. We're, we're like learning like what to post and even in our eyes and, and, how, and everything. It's, it's so new for us. Yeah. Even the way, even sometimes the way we dance, we're like, can't move like that. Like we're, we're really learning. It's like a whole new, and it's a beautiful thing. We're growing into yeah. like women. And, but for me, it was really shedding a part of my identity. I, I modeled, so I was, my, I was on my looks and sex appeal and things like that. So to, to shed all that was, I'm, it's like a brand new woman and it's in a beautiful way though. Do your friends think you're crazy? Like the other friends? You know, you know, it's Do you guys so have funny, those conversations. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's so funny that I've experienced in my life. I, uh, maybe I have good people in my life, but like all of my non-believer friends or the ones who aren't like this are so proud of yeah. us and yeah. love this for us yeah. so much. Mm. We don't get criticism yeah. from non-believers. Like they think it's cool. I think people think standing firm in something is very cool, regardless of what yeah. it is. Um, I'm, yeah, of course people think we're crazy. We're sitting there being like, the devil is after you. Like, of course they think <laughs> we're crazy. He's in our head, he's in our head. <laughs> <Yeah. Let's> <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't think you're crazy. I actually think you guys have like, a, like my biggest thing with you, and we would talk about this, was like, you are someone who loves Jesus so passionately, but then you were figuring out the other side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was the same way. I just wasn't as loud about the Jesus part yeah. probably, right? He was the loud one and I inherited it, right? Yeah. Which, which is complicated in its own self. But... I do find that how many of my friends that I know do not go to church or come to, like, I can't have real conversations about faith with them, follow your podcast. Mm -hmm. And I love it. Like, girls and guys. Guys, I will question them. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> but but the girls, I'm like, I, I love that they're so, that they're following it. They're engaged. And that there's no, they don't feel the judgment or the shame of the podcast on their life, right? That these girls have changed their life, but they're, a part and get to be a fan a part of what you guys are doing yeah it's a safe amazing. place yeah. it's a safe place because we've been through so much stuff and it's okay god will meet you right where you're at and i and when i knew that i was like okay it's okay that i've messed up in my life it's okay that i don't come from you know a background of, i wasn't raised christian like it's okay it's okay that i was broken and i was trying to figure it out on my own and didn't lean on god my whole life he's right there and so I it's think, just yeah, I think what I'm most proud of about uh, about the podcast is like we have, like you said, a lot of non-believers. We have a lot of people um, of the Jewish faith, mm. of the Islam faith, um, a lot of atheists. Like when I see people commenting, being like, hi, I'm Muslim, but I love your podcast and I learned so much. Like I truly couldn't ask for anything else to, yeah. than to make people feel safe enough um, to listen to listen to us and to, you know, somewhat in some way guide them towards Jesus and towards scripture. Hmm. I love it. So how do you um, put together the content like for a podcast? Yeah. Well, what's the process? Do you pick a topic? Do you just take something you're working through? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do yeah. actually, yeah. Yeah. And we pray on it. We really sit and pray together on it. And then it literally comes to us. We don't plan it. We, after our, after we film, we, we pray and it literally comes to us. Yeah, we'll just randomly be like, so basically we uh, have a topic for every episode and we have a format now where we'll do, um, since like the third episode, I remember it, we had like filmed two episodes and I was like, we have to, I was just always so afraid, just like you, how, on Sundays, you can't have that much of an opinion, but you can hear. Like for me, I want to be so biblically correct and factual that I don't, I want to be careful of my own opinions. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If they don't follow scripture. Um, so what we do is we will, we'll just 
pray and we'll think and like be like god what do you what like what's something that we can talk about and he'll put it like on one of our hearts mm -hmm. and like something random like the wilderness season and then we'll go in the bible and be like what should we read and then we'll read a piece of scripture um we'll talk about it talk about what it means do like a you know bible study for dummies and then <laughs> most of the time i can't pronounce any other words <laughs> <laughs> it's so <laughs> it's like i constantly love it correcting me and I'm oh, that's, that's amazing <laughs> hey some of the words are hard in there it's, and we read new king james version so it's just it's a lot sometimes wait a minute why well, yeah are you reading the king james version i don't i just have from the beginning and i just challenge myself is that silly <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say is that silly. wrong? I'm just saying that it's more Shakespearean. Yeah, it is. You, you know, and so it just depends what kind of movie you're trying to make. Yeah. You know, are you, are you trying to make a movie that reflects Shakespeare, or are you trying to make a movie that re reflects, you know, you know, Tarantino or right, Scorsese, right. or you know, and so the language does matter. Yeah. And it, it, it's not more accurate. Mm -hmm. There are more accurate translations. By wow, the way. what do you pr what do you prefer? I mean, if you want the singular, probably most accurate, it would be something called the uh, American Standard. But really? It's, but it's ugly. Uh, you, you know, it's not as poetic. Okay, that's you, okay. You, you know, the King James is more poetic. Yeah. New, uh, the American Standard is more accurate. The NIV, the New International Version, is probably the most dynamic in terms of what English actually sounds like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and so what I encourage people to do that what I do is I'll, I'll look at different translations to get the like to get the different nuances of a verse wow yeah uh, but then I'll, I'll use the new international or i'll even use the children's bible oh yeah that's what i do <laughs> I, watch, <laughs> I love it i watch no. the videos yes. I, I yeah yep. it's so foreign helpful. to me sometimes yeah yeah, yeah. and so yeah. yeah sometimes you know you want to use the king james just it's so poetic and yeah. it's pretty and other times you want to use like the children's bible because you want people to to understand this how simple this principle this truth is yeah and so it's you know but i think the more common one i use is the niv new international version mm -hmm. and uh it because what jesus did is he spoke in a language called you know uh we use you know aramaic but koine greek is mm -hmm. is the language the bible really um speaks to us in and it's common greek it's not high greek it's it's just everyday greek wow and and you know when you look at the old testament you look at the hebrew like the language is very simple it's very straightforward god wasn't trying to make things complicated their names are very hard to pronounce <laughs> and, uh, but you know look at the ten commandments like you know you shall not kill it's very straightforward yeah. you know? and uh, and he's not trying to make things really complicated yeah okay, so even know. you know yeah so don't feel like you have to use the most complicated version yeah uh, you know to yeah. think at a high level yeah, I think yeah. that's, yeah, thank you. I think I needed that. <laughs> I have been forcing myself to read New King James for a long time. But yeah, maybe I'd I'll be get able to King NIV. James. It, it was funny, in Spanish, um, the, the, key, the King James in Spanish is called the Reina Valera. Mm -hmm. And so when I began relearning Spanish and speaking in Spanish, I began by reading Reina Valera. Wow. Which then I started speaking all over Latin America, and they would say, you sound like, you know, you're you're very educated and almost like very like shakespearean yeah because i was using a language that was so high spanish that it wasn't street spanish yeah because i was matching this translation right and so and and my friend said could you bring a little more street spanish and so i had to start reading more like street spanish translations mm -hmm. so that the language would be more earthy it's the same thing with english okay okay i got you i'll get in an iv today. But, <laughs> but honestly that one of the great things that he taught me early on when i i think i had like a faith moment i was 23 years old in new york mm -hmm. and i was you know every lunch break and i would get up early and go and read my bible and send these coffee shops and i would have like an ipad that he had given me and like a, my bible and so i had different translations and always taking notes and highlighting but he would always be like flip from version to version like mm -hmm. find like the nuance of the scripture go into the back end of things and you'd send me all these different programs to like how you can google different words and and but the thing that i've always come back to is the children's bible so we give so to like good. all of our friends who like have those faith moments in their life and we're like i don't know anything i don't know any of the stories like this was the best thing for people for me actually too because i don't understand what's going on in the i can't even be cursive <laughs> like, I'm like, I, like i have no idea um, remember the whole point of the bible is god wants people to understand yeah y you know yeah and just simplify everything Okay. And, um, Bible for dummies, 
is actually the the Bible that changed people's lives. Yeah. Because, you know, in real life, we're all dummies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and we just need wisdom to help us make For it through sure. every day. Yeah. You've obviously had a lot of success. Would you call it success? Or is this like ex what you expected or unexpected? We look at each other sometimes when people come up to us and we're like, what? Yeah, we had a moment the other day where I felt, I don't I don't know where we were, but it felt like just people kept coming up to us being like, so how's the success? Like, how is it? And I, we got in the car and I looked at her. I was like, do you feel successful? I don't know, do you? <laughs> and so I, I like, I, yeah, I, for me, like every number, I know this is so cheesy and he can't stand it, but every yeah. number, every view that we have is truly to me, a soul that heard yeah. about Jesus and like, is like pushed I in like the right that. direction. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank God. I but every thumbs approval. down on YouTube no. is the devil. No, 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 Look, I'm just going to tell you something really funny. Okay, okay. He acts. Act what? He, you know, he acts like, you know, he's not into it. I know, but, I could see it. But whenever he's around his friends that don't believe in God, He's the one that tells everyone about Jesus. Really? Yes, of course. All the I time. Still, I that changes it. things. Yeah. Yeah. And just, with you, I'm like, <laughs> I'm speaking a different <laughs> language right now. Well, it's just that you're still speaking King James. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> He's I know, speaking I, I resonate with the children's Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Good way. Because, I, but I also like, I think I experienced you in a different era of your faith, mm. right? And you, and that was a unique experience because you, you you spent the last 15 years really making sure you could speak to the person furthest from Jesus or yeah. someone who had no familiarity with the Bible. And you were raised in that. And I was raised in that yeah. era of his yeah. life. And so I think that's a different thing, right? Yeah. When my mom's on a different level is she is also a master's in theology and she still speaks old English, you know, like that's, <laughs> that's it's a so different good. reality. Like mm -hmm. the expectation for her is far more, um, maybe, uh, how would you say? Kim, it's real if you use the right language. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll have this argument at home. Yeah. She'll say, Erwin, the devil is real. <laughs> This is a very deep voice. Can, I, you, no, can, no, can no. we go? He's come to a family can we go party. To dinner? Like, I, I, I would love to. Come to you Thanksgiving. Guys, you guys yeah. see it yeah. all so fun. We, we are you? Oh, and then I would tell her things that I saw in the Bible, and she'd go, "Please don't tell anyone that." <laughs> She goes, just just keep it in the house. Well, what what <laughs> Wait, was it? So what was the top? We oh, I went on some tangent the other day. Well, I remember the well, no, we mean you mean twenty years ago or no, sure. Let's bring it up. <laughs> yeah. No, I remember I was in the living room one day and I and I remember I said, Solomon's wrong. And she goes, What? And I said, Solomon was wrong. And I and, and I said, you know, when he said there's nothing new under the sun, he was wrong. And Cam's like, You're going to hell. <laughs> I mean, just that's your, straight up. That's her straight up, usually no her first way. response. And I said, what? And she goes, you, you can't say Solomon was wrong. And I said, I'm not saying the Bible's wrong, but that's what everyone hears. Mm -hmm. I'm saying Solomon was wrong. She goes, you can't say it. Please, please don't say that outside of this living room. So I kept it for years. And then finally, I'm speaking at an event with maybe over 100,000 people at that one. Yeah. And I, she was- why decided she, that was the moment. Why are you, you so fidgety? Why are you so fidgety? Because I, I don't really get fidgety before I speak. Yeah. I'm really super focused. And I, was, I, knew what, I knew what I was going to talk about. And I knew not only did my wife not agree with me, that no one would agree yeah. with me. And I remember get up there and said, Solomon was wrong. And- when Solomon says there's nothing new under the sun, I said, why do you trust a man who begins by saying everything is meaningless? Mm. This is a man who had no hope in life and you're building your whole view of reality on him. But in Isaiah 43, 18 and you're 19. You're talking about Ecclesiastes 1. Yeah, Ecclesiastes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see. He Go says through it. When, in Ecclesiastes, Solomon says there's nothing new under the sun. And Christians say that well, he all says the meaningless, time. meaningless, everything is meaningless. Yeah. yeah. And then he begins to go on. So, yeah. but go, you know. But you, then in Isaiah 43, God says... Uh, put away the former things. Do not dwell in the past. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Mm. And even now it springs up, but will you see it? And I, go, and I said, so who are you going to believe, Solomon or God? Because Solomon says there's nothing under the sun, and God says, I'm doing a new thing. In fact, everything God does is new. New new covenant, new life, new birth, new heart, new mind. Yeah. And, uh, like, and, and Solomon says there's nothing new under the sun. So I'm just using this as an example of one of those things where I kept hearing everywhere I went in the world, because I would say to people, I think God wants to do something different. And they go, Erwin, 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 there's nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. It is their way of telling me, stop trying to be creative. Start trying to be innovative. We're going to do it the same way because there's nothing new under the mm -hmm. sun. And I felt like I was suffocating. If there's nothing new under the sun, I want to die. Yeah. 
because that means there's nothing new to create, yeah. no new imagination, no no creativity, no beauty. It's like it just really for me was like sad. Yeah. And um, and mosaic is a proof that there's always something new, that God's doing something new every day, mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful thing. But I think there's a lot of things in the Bible that we've been taught as traditions that are actually not true. Yeah. But we hold on to them because there are traditions. And a lot of people who attack you are people who feel like their traditions are being attacked. Mm. And they're afraid of the new. Yeah. You know, and, and so part of the challenge is that, you know, Aaron grew up as a kid going to nightclubs on Sunday instead of church. Yeah, wait, with the judginess, wait till he yeah. finishes. I'm not <laughs> I was a kid. <laughs> and uh, I remember one, one day he was like 10 or 11 years old and he goes, bye mom, I'm going to the club. <laughs> His church was in the club. Yeah. Because Mosaic started in a nightclub. Oh, the, wow. the, the, A yes. nightclub that Prince used to own. And, uh, and Kim would go, you're not going to a club, you're going to church, you're going to church. But he never heard, hey, we're going to church. Yeah. yeah. He would say, hey, I'm leaving for the club. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> so he grew up as a kid funny. going to church in a club. Yeah. Right. So the building was never church, right? It was always the people coming mm, together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he always, you know, came to a world where there's always innovation. And there was something cre creative happening. And, and the language, you know, was very different. I yeah. use I used language where my friends who were atheists, agnostics, and Buddhists, and Hindus, it, it made sense to them, yeah. you know? And, and so even the other day when I did a talk, and I knew I was going to talk about like I was going to talk about Satan. I was going to talk about the devil, and and I remember realizing, oh, I'm going to use I'm going to use Lucifer, mm. and because it's a less used word, because it doesn't come with all of this baggage, mm -hmm. and there's also a TV show called Lucifer. So now the culture is being introduced to Satan through mm -hmm. this word, and, and and so I'm very like nuanced that way. And the word Lucifer actually means light, because Lucifer, Satan, is an angel of light. Mm -hmm. And um, but the moment he disconnected from God, he thought he was the source of light. And so the moment he disconnected, he became a source of darkness. Mm. And and so I and so in my talk, I thought, okay, how do I talk about something that most thoughtful people, intelligent people, would go, that's ridiculous. Yeah. And how do I have that conversation in a way where they go, oh, that kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I spent a little more effort. Just getting there. Yeah. yeah. But it's oh, not that I don't genius. agree with you. Genius. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah, you, you know? absolutely. But I still love the way that you do it because you're allowed to do it that way. Yeah. Because it's honest to who you are and where you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think it's really you were talking about like that. There's nothing new under the sun, and some. And, but the reality is that there's so many new things, and God is doing new things Constantly. all the time. And I think you guys are examples of that. Yeah, yeah. like God has bottled up two completely different people than the Christian world is used to. Yeah, and we're like, and give has given you so much favor and success. And I think a lot of that is is attributed to your hard work and ability to sit down and put in effort like it is hard to read the bible oh, it, is. it is not always a very easy book it's an inspiring book once you commit to it yeah. but there's times where i don't i'm so i get exhausted by the things that i read or like i'll call him and be like what actually just happened yeah. but with you guys talking about new things what do you guys want to do with this thing where do you guys see it going mm -hmm. so we have we actually want wanted to ask you guys <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so basically, we um, have already started. We want to grow Girls Gone Bible. We just want, honestly, we want it to keep doing its thing. When we first started it, and it first started to like gain traction and um, viewership, we had so many people coming up to us being like, give us a chance. We'll build your podcast. Like, we'll do this, we'll do that. And we we're like, we, it's actually doing, we're not even like, it's doing itself. Like the audience is doing it. Like it's gaining like the Instagram and the YouTube, like it's all doing it itself. So we were like, let's just keep doing what we're doing and, and talking about God and spreading the word. And that's all that we need to do right now i think as of right now we want to um we're doing like speaking engagements people are inviting us to come speak um do like q, q a's and stuff like that um just based off of what we know in our testimonies and going through a lot of pain having to get sober like all these things um so that's kind of the direction we're going in right now we are going to do uh, girls gone bible baptism we want to start doing baptisms and okay. there are people from like all over the country who want to fly in and come get baptized yeah. you want to baptize them for us because <laughs> i don't think we're qualified <laughs> yeah we wanted to ask you <laughs> no. so yeah how do you deal yeah. with manage the being feeling like you're unqualified hmm. 
You know, you guys literally breathe at the same time. It's I crazy. know. I know. We're the same. We feel unqualified, but <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> we get messages like, "I was about to commit suicide, and you actually saved my life." So when we get these mm. messages, I'm like, "Whoa! Like we're doing something right." So we just need to keep going. So when we think about the next two, three years or whatever, I just say to her, I'm like, we just need to continue to keep helping people. Like if we're getting these messages that are literally saving people's lives, that's enough for me and I'm, that's enough for her. Yeah. It's the, mo- it's the biggest blessing I could have ever asked for, truly. In reg- you know? Yeah, in regards to feeling qualified, I don't think, you know the quote that's like, God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the mm-hmm. called. Mm-hmm. I believe that with my whole heart. And when we first started this, and even with other things in my life, I've always had imposter syndrome. I've always suffered with that. I have always been like embarrassed of when I would have success. It was a very mm-hmm. weird thing. I never enjoyed having a successful moment. It was never enough for me. When I really entered a relationship with God, I realized like, if God puts me in a room, it's because I deserve to be there and I'm gonna act like I deserve to be there. I'm not gonna apologize for my presence and like feel like I don't belong. Um, And the podcast is, one thing you can't take away from us is how much we love Jesus. Like truly say whatever you want, but like anyone who knows us knows how much we love him. So when you do something from such an authentic place, who cares what anyone says and I'm, it's real and i'm actually glad that we don't have egos because i think that's why we are where we are like we we truly you and i do not have egos at all like we are just open arms we don't look at ourselves as these successful girls we just are two girls bringing people and helping people to god you know so and i love that about us i love that we're not we don't have yeah we're not cocky I, we just we're don't not, think we yeah, don't, yeah we don't think about it at all honestly yeah. I and that. I think that's honestly a beautiful thing because yeah. I see people that act like that and I'm like, well, we always talk yeah. about how you arrogant, know. Yeah. arrogance is our number one. Like you never be I, arrogant. I just think it's the unfortunately the ugliest trait that anybody Truly can is. have. I think being humble is I think the ar- arrogance is where things start to really go wrong for people when you think that your you know, stuff doesn't stink anymore. It's not a good place to be, you know. I agree 100%. <laughs> I, I think it's interesting when you, um, I wanted to ask the same thing. Where do you guys want to go from mm-hmm. this? You know, mm-hmm. um, But not even where do you think it can go, but where do you want it to go? You yeah. Know? But when you asked about people being baptized, one, you don't have to be qualified to be baptized um, because no one's qualified to be baptized in that sense. But when I um, led my friend John Gordon to Christ, he's, um, he was, uh, he's Jewish. He was a Buddhist energy coach. And... I led him to faith through a podcast, wow. his podcast actually. And he asked me to baptize him. And I told him, I said, look, I want you to find a, a local church because I don't want you to become my follower. I want you to become Jesus's yeah. follower. And so it's not about being qualified, but it's about um, doing it in community. Yeah. And so maybe we can do something here at Mosaic with you guys and um, do something together. Um, because I do think it's important. There's an interesting thing. Paul actually says, talks about people following him before they follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people act like people aren't supposed to be following you. And that'll be one of the criticisms you'll get, you know, is, you know, people are following you and not Jesus. They should follow you first. And, uh, and as long as you're following Jesus, they're going to run right into Jesus, which is awesome. I have a, and you have a lot of friends. I know you do who, are atheists, um, a lot of friends who are Jewish. You have a lot of friends who don't believe in God and the only reason they have any openness is because of you. Mm. Yeah, I love you. Easter and Christmas are my favorite times mm. because I can get all of them. I just I just manipulate and just beg. Now that's really bad, but I like use all the <laughs> relational equity that I have that I've built during the year to just go, please come experience this one time. Yeah, yeah. you you said you know. something to me a long time ago where you were like, there are a lot of people in my life who only know God through me. And that really yeah. stuck with me when you said that. Yeah, and I think, you know, I, I I would say this, you know, we were talking about how do you navigate between people, friends who do believe in Jesus and friends who don't, and then how to just have human relationships with people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when, you know, th- there's so many people who will talk about, you know, this is the right ratio to how much time you should spend in the world to not. And I, I would love your perspective on that because yeah, I, yeah. I think you're someone who spends 99% of your day to day with people who don't know God and have maybe no interest in it until they meet you. Yeah, one of the funniest things is uh, when Aaron and Mariah were probably teenagers, they said, hey dad, you seem to not like Christians <laughs> and you only seem to like people who aren't Christians, but if we're Christians, do you still like us? 
and, uh, and they realize, okay, I got to work on my language here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I really um, definitely prioritize people who didn't believe in God yeah. in my life. And, and even now, I mean, in the companies that Aaron and I uh, run together, um, so many of the people I work with are not Christians. And I, I do love working with people in the business world who are atheists or, and now people refer them to me. I mean, it's really funny. You, you know, they, uh, I remember one time I got a call from a guy from the Mayo Clinic who was a, a brain surgeon. And he calls me and he goes, my friend, uh, and he told me the person's name, a person was a journalist and I helped them come to faith. He goes, she told me I should call you because I'm an atheist and I have questions about God. I thought it's so funny to have referrals yeah. where literally people will call you up and go, okay, I have questions about God. You know, they told me you're the person to talk to. But we've had people in the business space who started as atheists, who opened up their lives, who actually came to know Jesus. And even some of them have been baptized, have flown in to be baptized here at Mosaic. And I, I just love that as a part of our life and our journey. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think it's just important to always have people in your life who don't, believe like you believe absolutely oh, yeah. you, you know absolutely and, and to be really like you don't have to be perfect but you have to be kind mm -hmm. yes you, you know people without jesus they don't expect you to be perfect but they do want you to be kind mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and when you're kind to people who don't believe in jesus and you're kind to people who do believe in jesus it opens up the whole world to you it's truth and absolutely. you know so i think you guys are just going to have more and more and more influence because you genuinely are kind and you um you really are who you appear to be. Thank and you so much. That's very, very rare, you know, in the world. And what people want is authenticity. What they want is a sense of connection. Yeah. So it doesn't surprise me you have people who follow you guys who aren't Christians, even mm -hmm. though your podcast is very Christian. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, it's because they're not connecting to the religion part. Mm -hmm. They're connecting to the authentic journey part. Yeah. yeah. And then you keep pointing them to Jesus to go, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's really, really um interesting yeah and maybe i'm open to it yeah you know most of our friends who come to faith we've never sat down and i've never sat down and said i need to talk to you about jesus i mean just never happens they usually have to ask me and um and then if i have one conversation with them i go hey i won't bring this up again you'll have to ask me yeah and and it's really funny you know like they wait and they go you're really never going to talk to me about, about god and i go no you already know what i believe mm -hmm. so if you ever want to know more let me know and it's amazing how many people will call me up or send me a text or say, hey, I, I really would like to talk more, yeah. you know? And I think that's what you guys are gonna find is that you're gonna end up with so many people. Uh, and I think you're gonna affect a lot of young girls too. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, I think right now, for especially for young women, finding an identity yeah. that isn't based on sexuality, that isn't based on fame, that isn't based on, um, ironically, on how men feel about them. Mm -hmm. It, you know, and this whole era of empowerment, so much is built on how men actually feel about you. And I think yeah. what you're actually doing is you're shifting the conversation. It's not even about how women feel about you. It's about how, how God feels about you mm -hmm. and how you feel about yourself. Yeah. And then going from there. Mm -hmm. You couldn't have said that better. Truly. I have chill bumps. No, it's that so is, true. Yeah. I that's That honestly speaks to what I said before about how anything that the media like pushes as empowering or like i don't know if we can really go into this but it's it's things like like feminism for example mm -hmm. it's just an example of like it's feminism is kind of like anti-men like you go against men and it's empowering because we don't give men what they want but then feminism also says like give your body to whoever so men are still benefiting off of <laughs> feminine like it's all backwards it doesn't actually mm -hmm. make any sense um but yeah we Do you guys talk about that on the podcast we we in very careful you, you do the hair flips at the same time like it's crazy <laughs> we you have know to be so careful all right you don't have to be careful here okay okay, okay. okay. You know what it is? so say the things like, here okay, that you want to say on your podcast that you don't okay we will so basically we never want to talk explicitly like about politics we, politics we never want to take a side because we don't want to create any more division that's not that, that doesn't do any good for anybody. So we try to promote the things that we believe in rather than bashing the things that we hate. Mm -hmm. um, but I am radically anti-feminism and I, we oh. like, we're really big <laughs> on guys? traditional values. We're really big on like, yeah. 
yeah. male being roles masculine. Yeah. We're not allowed women. to have a, a, a an opinion. Since oh, okay. We're not okay. No, <laughs> yes, yes, you right. are. That's well, another. This episode, I might be, but I, yeah. I, yeah. Why are women afraid to actually give their opinion in a world that where feminists are saying women should be allowed to say what exactly. they want to say? Exactly. Yeah, because you're not actually allowed to say what you want to say unless it aligns with what. Uh, the powers that be tell you you have to say so like it really isn't about women's empowerment it's about the empowerment of a very particular belief system yes exactly mm. i like yeah i where i'm not the thing is i will say the thing about me and ari i think why we're certainly not communicators like you that's for sure but we like people will listen for some reason and i think it's because it is authentic and people know that we are coming from a place of love. We are not trying to harm anyone or create division. So when we say these things are not actually good for you, feminism is actually not working in your favor. That's literally the reason men feel like they don't have to pay the bill. Like it is not empowering. It's not good. That's a crazy it thing. It benefits men. That. That's the thing about feminism that I think is so funny. It benefits men on all fronts. And yeah. I am pro men and pro women. Me like, too. But men don't want to be men anymore. So, and women don't want to be women anymore. Mm. Oh, so let's talk about that. That's yeah. interesting. Mm. Do you, have on. you been can on you a... Put that, mm. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can zoom in on your face. Have you been on dates where men don't want to pay? I, have, have you? you? Experienced I personally, that personally haven't, but... No. No, but... but or, oh, you no, know, well... <laughs> oh, t can I be honest? I mean, yes. I have been in situations where I could tell the person wasn't... F I If I have to even like have a moment where I think or I'm like, should I? Then I know something is wrong. The energy's not right here because right. it's completely inappropriate on like a date for, I, I believe. Um, but I'm not even gonna, like I wouldn't even like pay into that at all. I would just sit there politely and be like, thank you so much. So no, I haven't technically been in that position, but it happens. What's, the, what's going on in your head I'm right just, now? You got stories. No, it's just, yeah. <laughs> but it is really a common thing in LA. Like uh, most of my girlfriends would say that at some point and on a date, they don't want to uh, grow up. The, 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 the man has been like, oh, we're splitting this. And I'm like, I'm always mortified by no, that. No, like, they're doing understand. ketamine in the club at like 40 years old. They're like saying maybe someday I'll be a father. No one yeah. has values anymore. It's, yeah. it is, it's really sad what's going on right now. Yeah. I mean, we feel it in an extreme way because we're in Los Angeles. Yeah, and I think for it's sure. Where, so I think we've talked about this a lot. We'll kind of give a caveat. Like the middle of America experience is it completely different right. than like New York, Miami or, mm -hmm. or LA. But it is a really interesting thing that men in LA don't want to grow up. There's this definite Peter Pan syndrome where yeah. they just want to keep sleeping with 19 year old models. And then they and then, you know, you're 19 years old and you're in LA and you don't know better. And so mm -hmm. it's like becomes this really interesting cycle of like unhealth. But as far as like dating someone, have you guys what do you tell girls on the pod about do you guys talk about dating or talk about like how to what happens when someone wants to split the bill like do you guys give life tips yeah dating is like the <laughs> number one thing now? anyone wants to talk about it's like it yeah. gets the most views it's all anyone cares um, yeah, I would we don't say have to talk about it, it. No, 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 no. We don't want views at all. Listen, this is my nope. favorite topic. I love We could talk about this all day. I'm going to say it right now. If you're at a dinner with a man <laughs> and the bill comes, you sit, you do not, you do not no. pull up. You don't even offer. You don't offer. You, that's not okay. The truth is a man will grow into that masculine role if you stay back and you stay feminine. But like even offering kind of gives them the slack to be like, oh, maybe that is normal when it's not. Hmm. I don't, okay. yeah. Yeah. Why? No, what do you no, guys you don't think? Want to pay. I love this. I okay. know, it's it's so interesting. No, I agree with it too. I, mean, <laughs> I would come Angela from the perspective. You don't want to pay? No, we would, we would talk about say? this about like if I would say this to young guys that I know if you can't afford to take someone out, mm -hmm. then don't. Then yes, just keep working. Absolutely. I agree. Get, get yourself to a place where you're able to financially be stable. Or be really open. Like, yeah. hey, I can't like take you on a date. Can we go on a walk and get a coffee? Yeah. Like that's okay too. Like yes. if you're not in the financial space and you're still on a date, I, good luck. Absolutely. Good luck. But be open and upfront about it versus expecting the the woman to take care of things. Yeah, I think that if you're a man in a really bad situation, I don't think you need to isolate yourself and never talk to women. But I do think that you need to be working on your life and your career and where you're at financially before even thinking about going out with women. I think you need to get your priorities straight in that sense. Hmm. Um, yeah, we talk a lot about masculinity and about femininity and how um, we do think that these days 
th- whoever it is has pushed a lot onto men that like being a man is a bad thing and mm-hmm. that you know you need to be soft and you need to feel your emotions and i think that you can feel your emotions while also being a man yeah. um i actually just posted something today that was like jesus was the perfect he was the embodiment of masculinity he was a lion and a lamb he was tough and he was soft he was kind and he was fierce and and you can be all of these things you don't have to choose you know yeah i do but when it comes to men and emotions like you grew up in a generation where men are not allowed to cry and if you cried you were seen as weak and if you were weak you're seen as vulnerable and vulnerable men got taken advantage of yeah but you're someone who's incredibly uh wise about how to use emotion like you feel emotion and you're real about your emotion you never manipulate with your emotion but you don't cry very often maybe three times in my entire life and one really? of them was, was probably during Braveheart or something like that. <laughs> um, but but it, do you believe that yeah. women allow men to be able to use their emotions? Does it make you uncomfortable when men cry? No. I, Is it over me? <laughs> Sorry, I'm oh, just kidding. Dang. That's, we're going to clip that for <laughs> I'm sure. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> I think it's... I think it's really important for a man to be able to open up to a woman. I love when men can be vulnerable. I just don't like when men are so feminine in the way that they can't lead you and take care of you and provide. It really rubs me the wrong way. I don't like it. I just think this is the um, untold story. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of women feel the way you feel. I feel a lot of young women feel the way you feel. Um, I mean, I'm obviously a completely different generation, you know, and um, and so I mean, we we raised you know Aaron as our only son uh, to be a gentleman. Like you know, he he would never even he would pay meals for the men, yeah, yeah. not just for the women. But you more you, than you know? a gen- like I've made lots of mistakes. It would probably be very ungentlemanly. Yeah, but you <laughs> disagreed. <laughs> right, I'm glad you said yeah. Yeah, no, no, you, 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 you you know, ingrained in me to be a provider. And yeah. that I think would be, you know, character side. You, you always taught me to look out for the person who can't. And yeah, I don't so, mean that, you know, you haven't made mistakes and, you know, tried to figure out your life. Yeah. I'm saying that we we never raised you to think that you should not be the person to take care of someone. Mm-hmm. You, you know, even if the other person has greater capacity for wealth, you mm-hmm. still have your job to do, you, you know. Yeah. And so it's an interesting thing because, you know, Mary and Kim, I joke, you know, Kim, has never used the word submission one time in her life. I, stop! I was about to say, what do you? How do you feel about biblical submission? My my uh, my wife would never. I don't think she would ever say that. She you know, wasn't. It's interesting. I don't think she would ever choose to be submissive, but uh, but say that she wasn't. Mm-hmm. So it's an interesting mix. I think from the flip side, I've never expected Ken to be submissive. I expected myself to lead so strongly that mm-hmm. she just had to follow with me. And, you know, so the word submission means to be under someone's mission. Yeah. So if you're, if you don't have a mission, there's no way anyone could be under it. Yeah. You know, and Kim is very strong. She's very powerful. So I felt like, you know, I was on, I need to elevate to a really high level Mm -hmm. for her to feel she should follow me. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think a guy should expect a woman to become less than he is. I think he should elevate to be more than her in that sense so that she can actually have confidence. I also think there's a, like the, the the spectrum in America right now is you're either a you either have toxic masculinity or you're effeminate, mm-hmm. and there there really doesn't seem to be a third option or where you're allowed to be a man, mm-hmm. and and so so much of quote masculinity is actually in many ways femininity, mm-hmm. and you have to realize that that there was a cultural shift in America, um, even around t- TV characters. Where there was a there was a time where like the male character was like John Wayne, you, you know, he was like strong and um, you know confident and um, even maybe quiet and and uh, and a leader and would defend his family. And then it kind of shifted to, and a lot of people say it's Alan Alda when he was in Mash, mm. and the more sensitive man, the more you know um, soft or you know caring. Um, but you don't, those aren't contradictions. Yeah. You know, um, I've always felt like I'm a deeply caring person. I'm also, was always very clear that I was um, also a, um, a dangerous person. Mm-hmm. You, you know, I, I never felt like that I was either or. I always felt that was both and. That you can't actually be humble if you don't have strength. Right. You're just weak. Yeah. And you, you can't, um, 
You, you can't be a person who's meek if you don't have strength. Mm -hmm. You have to have strength first. Mm -hmm. and, and then you and then you have controlled strength. And I think that's what makes a man very unique in a lot of ways. And um, But I, I actually think that when a man is strong, a woman has the capacity to be strong too. Yeah. A, a strong man doesn't need a weak woman. Yeah, a weak man needs a weak woman. A strong yeah. man actually needs a strong woman because they're going to be living a life that requires strength. Right. And so I, I actually think it's more exciting. Culture has been trying to make men weaker so that women can, quote, be stronger. You, that's a terrible strategy. And I think that's why a lot of women are going to remain single. Yeah. Because they, we have developed strong women and we've actually developed weak men. Thank you. And, and, and now women can't find a man that isn't intimidated by them. And, you know, you better be a pretty strong guy if you're not going to be intimidated by a strong woman. Yeah, yeah. You're, I'm you're, very intimidated by Kim, but I think, by my mom, but I think that's, <laughs> that's the sun thing. But I wouldn't say she's submissive. I would say no. she's strong and that she is on mission. Yes. Right? And so that's, that is, um, yeah, it's really unique to watch as a son. I never tell my wife what to do. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, she wouldn't do it. And, uh, and uh, um, but I also um, lead with such force and sense yeah. of like, I create a future. And, and she loves what I create, you, you know? Absolutely. And, um, but most of my ideas that I've had in my life, she didn't agree with them when I was creating them. Mm -hmm. She couldn't see it. So if I waited for her to agree, I wouldn't have created almost anything I did. Yeah. And so you have to understand who you are in the mix of all that, mm -hmm. you, you know? And, and now it's kind of funny. When I start a business, she'll go, just as long as I have money, I can give away to build houses in Malawi, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> you know? like, it's like, as long as I can have my outcome, yeah. you know? And, um, and, and I also know that um, she's only happy, truly. I mean, Kim is only happy when she's on some kind of mission. I mean, she, you know, will go to Bangladesh and help build a school for young girls coming out of the sex trade or build homes and schools in Malawi or go to Haiti and, or India. And Kim needs her mission. And when she's on a mission, she's a really happy human being. When she's not on a mission, she's an unhappy human being. Wow. And I want to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and the only way I can really experience true happiness being married 40 years is for Kim to also be yeah. happy. So I work really hard to try to help create a world where she's really fulfilled. And I think that's when it is pretty wonderful. Yeah, definitely. I, I Back to what you said about how women have gotten stronger and men have gotten weaker. I've always said that I don't, like we don't need to bring men down to bring ourselves up. We why, Like us having to tear them down and put them down for us to feel empowered is not the way that it should be. And in terms of submission, like the uh, a ship can only have one captain mm -hmm. and someone has to steer it like that's kind of just how it works somebody has to somebody's going to lead mm -hmm. and for me personally i truly believe that being a woman and, and being feminine and I, and being in a position where like in our everyday lives and our personal lives, we, we do have to be a little dominant. We have to be leaders in work and in business. So when I come home, like I don't want to have to lead. I don't, I don't want to lead. I want to be with someone that I trust so much that I trust their intellect and I trust their character that I can shut my brain off. And I know that wherever we're going, I'm, I, am, I can be confident in it. And that's why submission is a beautiful thing. Like God doesn't do anything that's not for ev the good of everybody involved, mm. you know? And I think that women are so much more joyful when we are able to sit back and be led. We're much more like playful and light and joyful. And we can drop from our heads to our hearts and yeah. really be the woman that we're supposed to be. Yeah, because otherwise like being having to be in this like dominant position all the time is exhausting for us. You guys are built like that. Yes. We're not built like that. And so going against God's design is something that I, you know what, you said at one time in a talk, you said, I think you were talking about California. You were talking about something, but you were talking about how when, yeah, you were talking about California, about how sometimes they go, they've done so many things wrong the that they have too much pride to like admit, oh, we've actually done this wrong, but they keep going and they go and mm -hmm. until it fails. Mm -hmm. And that's what we kind of do with a lot of things. Like <laughs> I feel like this whole feminism thing and, and like switching gender roles or not having any gender roles has been something that we tried and it's failing. It's mm -hmm. not working. People are unhappy, single, not having kids, not doing well. 
And I just think like make America traditional again. Anyways. Yeah, people people <laughs> see, you can take people that out think they're need. cats now at school with litter boxes. <laughs> oh you no, can you, be, can be you can whatever be whatever you, you want. Can be a cat. I actually was hearing about no. this. I don't know if you're referring to the same thing. Yeah. But with, there was a there's like a case study, like some some family, like their kid re- like identified as a cat, so they put like a litter box in yeah. the house. Yeah. So the the kid would do that, and I was like, amazing. Put, put him in the cage too. Then. I'm yeah. Like, you're, do that's that's. But it, I don't know where this was, but I heard, listened to it two nights ago. Yeah. On that's some what pod. they're doing now in schools. Yeah. Yeah. You can and be the, whatever you want. Yeah. I mean, we were you were going to say something there. Oh, I was just going to say yeah, and you're considered a bad parent if you don't uh, immediately affirm your kid and tell him yeah you're a cat you yeah. are whatever you <laughs> yeah. want to be today I, 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 i've thought about it when did it shift from oh you're being a bad parent if you don't let your kid live in this delusion Thank to you. you're being a bad parent because you're you're you have such a broken fragmented child that their identity is devastated yeah, yeah. I, I i don't think people are taking ownership Mm-mm. of the fact that if you're six-year-old has identity issues. Mm-hmm. There's something wrong environmentally. That's right. In what's in what's happening, and we're not allowed to say that. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, it is astonishing to me that, um, in fact, I was watching this guy today say he was so confused. He was visiting from overseas, um, and he walked into L.A. He said, yeah. and the bathroom had like four signs, and he uh, the same bathroom. And he said, I, I didn't know what to do, but I had to really pee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said. But it was like it said male, female, had something else and something else. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we're taking some basic things that we think are progressive that actually are hurting the identity of, of really fragile human beings, yeah. which are children. Mm-hmm. And um, I just know you, people are happier and healthier when there's a holistic identity. Yeah. There's something broken um, when you don't know who you are. Yeah. And we keep trying to create space going, the more broken you are, the more right it is. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that it's going to lead us to a direction that we think it's going to lead us because we're going to have a more broken, fragmented culture and where people are going to be trapped inside of themselves and, and be empty. And I, I, I can't believe we're actually having a conversation about traditional roles of men and women. I know. With the Girls Why? Gone Bible. Why? Why? You tell us. You're the one saying it. <laughs> one, I just think it's in- incredible. We've never had this conversation yeah. before. Yeah, yeah. I think it would be unexpected. Um, but... Um, we are no, all I, about the traditional roles. <laughs> we are because we know that it's beneficial to people's lives and yeah. we don't want them to keep buying into lies that and it's just not working. Yeah. yeah. You know? Really quick, uh, um, what, what, we need to find Aaron, a nice Christian girl. Okay. Are we? <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> just, I, You're both single right do now, you, right? Do you, yeah. Do you like Christian girls? I, I thought you didn't like oh, Christian girls. this is girls. a loaded question. Is it, I don't, I don't, I like you, Christian girls. You want a I Catholic? Think, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're not doing this on, this, on my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, both of them said they're single, so you can find them, link in the bio. Um, <laughs> no, I, mean, I think I, dating, dating, dating is complicated in LA. I think I, you know, I, I, I am really grateful for the people that I've had the opportunity to spend time with in relationships. Uh, so there's no knock on anyone. Um, but it's, it is obviously being the son of someone who has had an amazing career and amazing like ministry and faith is really unique. Yeah. There's not a lot of people that understand that nuance and dynamic, and it's not an easy one to understand. Mm-hmm. If anything, it's like, I explain this to friends who don't go to church. It's like, I'm, we're, we're like, uh, I would say like I'm Ron Weasley in Harry Potter. Like there's some weird Harry Potter world, like magic and all these things that no one else understands exists except for us. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes it's this weird thing because we'll have, you know, we'll be out to dinner and someone will, the waiter or someone will come up and be like, I love, you know, the podcast. And thank you guys, I love Mosaic. Doesn't and Ron I, Weasley get the girl? He does get the girl. <laughs> I meant it as like yep. he's not the main character. That's why I didn't want to say I'm, you know. But I think the reality is that like it's a it's a unique dynamic that I think I haven't figured out how to manage in a dating relationship. Yeah. So I do like Christian girls. I would say that the one time I dated a Christian girl in a serious relationship, it was one of the most disastrous things I've ever experienced. Wow. It's hard for you, I'm mm. sorry, for hard for Aaron to figure out when a person is a Christian, whether they are interested in him as a person mm. or him as a personality in the McManus story. Mm-hmm. And I think that's part yeah, why he be, that's a better way moved toward people that. outside 
faith because they don't care about me. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. Does it make yes. sense? Yeah. It's really coming to that place where you go, oh, this person's genuinely interested in me as a human being, yeah. mm. not as a pastor's son, not as a yeah. McManus. Yeah. And I think there are a lot of people who have someone who have a parent or something like that has some level of celebrity or some level of public fame or whatever it may be. And then you have to figure that out. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just like when people gain a lot of wealth and they're still single, they don't know if the person loves them for their money yeah. or loves them for them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you think dating in general is hard, imagine dating as a Christian. It's, it is. it's so hard. It's, it's, like, guys. it's a different thing. It, it is. Yeah, I mean, it truly you, like. No, we're gonna get her to talk yeah, because she yeah, just came at me about the Christian <laughs> girls thing. We're definitely. Yeah, but don't you think a part of the problem is that whenever, and I see this with Christians, all the time, whenever Christians break up, dominantly the girl, publicly roasts the guy. Really? Really? Yeah, it just. Seems I think like, she's he's experienced it through my my past relationships. I, I don't where like that at all. Every girl day that wasn't a Christian. We're usually still friends. We're like versus I've dated Christian girls, and then they go to IG or they say crazy stuff. What to the point where I'm like, man, this is actually insane. That like I'd rather date outside of the church because I there's no drama You've there. Had some, yeah, you know what I mean. So that was a, and that's that's where that's. But where I've I think also seen said, it yeah. because I pastor the church. Yeah. Right, right. So right, I watch like the social dynamics, and I go, it's too dangerous. Yeah, to date because if it, if one, if you break up, it did go bad. Yeah. Like you, you can't, you go, well, if it doesn't go bad, you don't have that problem. No. If you don't get married, you break up, yeah. and it means it goes bad. Yeah. Because somebody didn't want to break up and somebody did. Mm -hmm. There's never, oh, we're both equal. It's never that. Yeah. You know, somebody's hurt. Mm -hmm. And even sometimes the person who does the breaking up is actually more hurt mm -hmm. because they break up because they realize this isn't good for us, but the other person didn't have the courage to break up. <laughs> well, how old um, are these girls that are roasting you? Because I don't think a woman would do that. Well, that's the other thing is I don't know if there's I don't know if there's a lot of a plot twist. No, no, no. I think she was. I think the age difference wasn't actually that bad, but it was. Was you were younger too? I was younger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, anyways, I wanted to say thank you guys for being on. This. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. No, I do. I like, you know, we've awesome. gone for like an hour and 20 minutes. I just no. want to be respectful of your time, yeah. but I will do it again at some point. But like, thank you so much for being so open and being willing to like go there and talk about stuff, you know? You guys are incredible. And I just, we feel so safe with you guys and you guys are just normal and it's really nice. <laughs> you, no, your dad freed me when he came on the podcast. He literally goes, he looked at me and said, you can live your life. And I said, I know. I <laughs> Yeah, well. no, you guys were we yeah. love you yeah. so much you guys are you say we're the real deal you yeah, are the real deal. deal you're Thank good you. people like truly you practice what you preach you're you good do. people you care about people you anyone who's in your life you treat like family mm. and you guys are incredible and thank you for always just me ma making us feel so seen and you guys yeah thank you really no and by the way as you look for mentors Aaron knows the Bible inside and out. <laughs> we were <laughs> joking about that the other night. But we've always had that kind of conversations, yeah. like about faith, about the Bible. Oh, I call I used to call Aaron for everything. I, I don't she, know why he became well, my Google. I the, instead of you Googling, see, I'm out no, of no, He this, really knows the Bible. I do. He really, but the, <laughs> she sent me early before GGB. You sent me, can I say this about the two videos? The video, you, when you first started doing like Instagram stories and you were recording videos about <laughs> telling about the Bible, yeah. she calls me and it was like, hey, I had to send you this video. What do you think of it? And I was like, well, I love, I love that you're doing this, but those are actually two different stories. No, he, I, I, I said story. that Jesus parted the Red Sea. <laughs> yes, and then he called me. <laughs> and then I, 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 I sent it and I said, hey, can you tell me if this is right? Like it's right, right? I didn't say anything wrong. And he's like, Moses. Did <laughs> Moses parted Did the Red Sea. Did that too? Yeah, you have I to. I have done yeah. that so many times. Yeah. But anyway, oh, we love, I, we love so you guys. We love you. If you guys like said Jesus parted the Red Sea, People would believe you. I know. <laughs> I know. Because nobody, so many people don't read the Bible. Almost no one. I'm amazed how many people don't did. read the Bible. Yeah. And, and, yeah. Uh, and if you, you'll say so sincerely. It is so true. But yeah, I'm, I'm proud of you guys. And I've, and, and in, a, in a positive way, I'm so glad of, that you guys exist and that you guys are doing what you're doing. Wow. So Keep it up. Don't let the critics hold you back. Yes. And, um, you know, just keep, keep 
loving Jesus the way you do and loving each other and loving people is yeah. going to go great. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you guys. so much. Oh. You didn't right. say the, the, I know we didn't say the same thing. We ruined it. Do All it right. again. What? Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right, okay.